it gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker today. And our speaker is Susan Bauer. Susan joined the Chapel of Life in 1987 after attending chapel services and classes starting in 1985. She transferred her membership to the Metaphysical Chapel of Life in 2019 after returning to the Peninsula and is currently serving on the Chapel Board of Directors. From a child, she's always been interested in understanding why some individuals develop illnesses and diseases, which has taken her on a lifetime journey of study and enhanced her connection with spirit. She credits the Chapel of Life, where she first learned to meditate, the Moral Spiritualist Church, and the Edgar Casey Association for Research and Enlightenment were providing her foundational metaphysical and spiritual understanding, guidance, and tools that have served her well through the years, often to her own surprise and delight. Susan has been a practitioner <coughs> of Jin Shin Jayistu and energy harmonizing modalities since 2001. She is a Casey Certified Life Course Coach, practices body talk, brain balancing, acunet, emotion releasing techniques and dowsing. She most enjoys receiving and sharing self-help information. Susan wishes everyone a personal connection with the source. I present you our speaker today, Susan Bauer. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. I guess you all know that Dr. Charles was to speak with us today. With the chapel still closed, the board of directors offered Dr. Charles some options, and she chose to reschedule so that she could speak to us in person on a future day. In any case, I'm your fill-in speaker, and I'd like to share with you some of my thoughts and findings about emotions. I know it is the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and you might expect me to speak about something associated with the upcoming holiday. In a way, I am, because as we gather for Thanksgiving, there may be situations or interactions which create an emotion for us. We all have emotions, and there are various aspects to our emotions. Like most of you, I have come to some personal findings and conclusions about how I now understand my emotions and how important it is to recognize to recognize them and be able to release them. And sometimes I do need help. About 30 years ago, going through a rather traumatic time in my life, I learned that I could understand and deal with painful issues with an application of logic, a left brain action. However, that really didn't solve the emotional side of the issue, the pain, the pain of the hurt that sticks with you. I needed to find a way to release the emotional effects as well. In other words, I could look at a painful issue or situation from both sides and understand the experience logically. That still left me with the emotional effects. In the process, I learned that the emotional side was the one that was making me uncomfortable and affecting my mental and physical being, basically holding me back in life. Certainly counseling helped, as well as wonderful friends, especially my friends in the metaphysical and spiritual communities. And truly, many of those hurtful emotions faded or dissipated over time, and yet some, some stayed. You often hear that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. Well, I've come to understand that my physical experience is ruled by my emotions and in how I deal with and specifically release them. Like most people, I have learned several ways to deal with and release my emotions. One method includes holding my fingers per the Jin Sin Jitsu practice I follow. This can be done while you're experiencing an emotional event or after. 
and let me demonstrate. Lightly hold your thumb for worry, your index finger for fear, middle finger for anger, ring finger for sadness or grief, and the little finger for try to or pretense when you're really trying to do something and it's just not working. And you breathe and relax. You can hold these in either hand as long as you want, as often as you want. And you can even hold them under the dining room table while you're having Thanksgiving and Uncle Fred is bugging you. The acronym to help remember this harmonizing method for emotions is get rid of worry fast. Worry, F-A-S-T. Fear, anger, sadness, and try to. Another approach is called RAIN, R-A-I-N. Now, Nolan Rennish spoke about RAIN during a Sunday lecture in 2020. RAIN is an acronym for a four-step practice that can ease emotions. The four steps are recognize, acknowledge, investigate, and non-identity. Although all of the steps are important to reach the end result, which is releasing the emotion. It is the fourth one. It is the fourth one, non-identity I wish to focus on. In this final step, one avoids being defined by a particular feeling. You permit yourself to see your own anger, fear or resentment, whatever is there. And instead of spiraling down into judgment, such as I'm a terrible person or whatever, you make a gentle observation, really not in a good place. This is pretty painful. I don't care for this too much, whatever. However, you also say, this is not who I am or who I want to stay. I don't want to stay angry. The key point in any of the methods we might choose to use is to release an emotion. Release the emotion so it doesn't stay with us, that it doesn't become stuck and part of our body, affecting our health and our well being. You may say, hmm, what do you mean about making emotions a part of our body? Well, in the process of my journey in understanding my emotions, I found interesting information on the molecules of emotion, a scientific view of emotions. Whenever we experience an emotion, there is a biochemical reaction that occurs in the body. The hypothalamus gland secretes a neuropeptide specific to that emotion that we're experiencing and it travels to cell receptors. The body and mind experience the emotion when the specific neuropeptide binds to the cell membrane receptor. Receptors are places in the body cell membranes that receive trans transmitters, vitamins, minerals. These receptors are designed to hold nutrients for physical health of the body and mind such as vitamin A, B, C, protein, lots of things. If we do not process and release an emotion, such as anger, more of the neuropeptide for anger is produced and more cell receptors hold the angry molecules. This limits the number of receptors available along the cell membrane to receive the necessary nutrients, such as the vitamins. Once anger or other emotions, such as grief or sadness, are released, the nutritional receptors can receive the vitamins and protein needed for the body's nutrient health. Dr. Candace Per was a pioneer in this field of research. She stated, feelings, are as powerful as drugs, and they work the same biologically, utilizing cellular peptides and their receptors. Therefore, feelings are the molecules of emotion. Basically, 
These molecules of emotion become a part of the entire body because they are stored in the cells of all tissues. Dr. Pert also stated, we know that the immune system, like a central nervous system, has memories and the capacity to learn. Thus, it could be said that the intelligence is located not only in the brain, but in cells that are distributed throughout the body, and that the traditional separation of mental processes, including emotions, from the body is no longer valid. So it seems that scientific studies confirm that having healthy and balanced emotions are directly related to our health. And I would add to our happiness and our satisfaction with our daily life. Therefore, one, one might extrapolate that a stuck emotion, one that has not been released, has just the opposite effect on our physical and mental health and our very happiness because it's blocking receptors needed for nutrient health and well being. I was pleased to read and Pam McIntyre's contribution to this week's newsletter, the following. To express ourselves wholly, we will need to address our emotional body, the unconscious parts of us that runs the show. To evolve, our emotional body must be on board. Well, based on the findings of Dr. Pert and others, our emotional body may well reside in the receptors of our cell membranes. So back to stuck emotions. Stuck emotions can be positive or negative, a past wonderful experience or a past trauma, or even a misunderstanding of a simple comment made to us when we were young children. Just for example, imagine you had the best summer ever when you were eight. And the emotion of that memory stuck with you, now a cell memory, now at the age of 20, 30, or maybe more. Every summer you have, every summer vacation, you compare that to the one you had when you were eight. You don't even realize you're doing it. In each case, you find the new summer vacation never measures up in any way never makes you totally happy or satisfied. So a stuck emotion can be a happy one and still impede the quality of your life. I think you can all imagine a negative stuck emotion, including words from a parent or an adult indicating disapproval of an action of a young child. However, the young child emotional memory recorded and stored it as being told they're a bad kid, they're dumb, or maybe not loved or even wanted. Many years ago, I learned about and completed training in releasing stuck emotions. I use the process regularly on myself and others. I like to work with folks in person so they can follow and participate in the process and see how it works because it's something we can all do for ourselves and others. For some, upon a quest, I will complete the process without their direct participation and provide them feedback via the phone or email. Now, there are several members of our chapel community besides me who practice releasing stuck emotions. Dr. Bradley Nelson has provided much information on the subject. The book entitled The Emotion Code is one of his offerings. The process I learned may be a bit different from what Dr. Nelson's approach or process is. However, using his charts are very helpful. In fact, in the recent past, he did have offer access to free charts and other material on his website. In closing, thank you for letting me share some of my thoughts, as well as some information about emotions particularly my concern for stuck emotions. I, I will provide a copy of the Jin Sinjitsu hand chart for inclusion in an upcoming newsletter and also a website for RAIN. And if I may share with you a Jin Sinjitsu self-hold, 
one that is powerful, a powerful harmonizer for the immune system. Only take a minute. What you do is you take your hand and put it over your shoulder like a coat hanger. I like to start out by testing each shoulder to see which one is kind of tense, which one needs a little love. So over the shoulder like a coat hanger. And the other hand goes into the crease that's right between where your leg joins your body and rest your hand on your groin. You can hang in there for as long as you like. I like to hang in until I feel some pulses in my fingers. And if they come together and they beat together, that's even better. It takes a little time, but that's okay. And if that's not a comfortable situation for you, best done lying down or back, you can put your fingers inside your palms of your hands, rest it on a table, your lap, or a pillow on your lap. Equally good. Just hang in there. I will tell you the coat hanger one I've been using a lot lately. A friend of ours who's in the hospital in Northern Virginia, his immune system has attacked his nervous system. It's a lot of pain. Um, I was in the theater in Norfolk a week ago yesterday watching a, a play. It's dark in there. It's amazing. You could just sit here and do that. And then when I got tired of that, I moved over on this side and sending distance healing. And so I wanna thank you for spending some time with me and letting me share with you. And I wanna wish you many blessings in the weeks to come and particularly for Thanksgiving. Thank you.